If you're having trouble running automatic 111 web UI on your PC, look no further than this video. What are you doing? Nothing. Are you stable diffusing again? No. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can run stable diffusion through your iPad or your iPhone or pretty much any device. You can also run it through your rubbish PC if you want to. Now what I'm using here is not Google Collab. I'm using something called RunPod. And the reason why I moved over, a multiple choice of GPUs to suit budget, a configurable setup you can get pull your own programs in. It takes seconds to boot from a device once set up. And for me it costs about 35 cents per hour and I can store and share my workspace with others. Also I can pick my GPU. GPU. For instance here I'm running on an A5000 GPU at 35 cents an hour which would cost me approximately $1,500 to buy. Also that would require me to buy a brand new rig. I love the fact that I can generate on my phone as well on the go using these powerful GPUs. And there are really no limits. I can create animations. I'm using control net with this as well. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how easy it is to set up your workspace in RunPod using their templates for stable diffusion, as well as how to install control net and how to get checkpoint files actually onto your workspace space to run. Now this is actually quite simple to do and if you do get stuck RunPod actually have dedicated support on their website. Obviously there are other services out there and I would love to try them all. I'm not tethered to one whatsoever. I just thought I'd bring this out to you guys because I know a lot of people ask me what PC I'm using in the comments and I'm technically using an A5000 without actually having to pay or own one. And you know Prompt Muse is at your service. I've got in touch with RunPod and asked them what they could do for the Prompt Muse community. So I've got a bunch of $25 credits to give out to you guys to get you set up and running for approximately about a week on RunPod. If you want to win one of those $25 credits, just sign up to the newsletter in the description below. I will be picking email addresses from there. Now in the comments section, just let me know also you've signed up to the newsletter. Anyway, let's get the video. Head over to runpod.io, which is this website here, and just simply click the sign up button and sign up for an account. Once you've signed up and logged in, you'll see this interface with lots and lots of options. First thing we want to do is go to the billing section of the RunPod website, and this is where we will add our credit. You can either get to the billing section here, or we can see this money, yours might be at zero at this point, just give that a click. You can see, I think the minimum you can add at this point is $25. You can pay by card or Bitcoin. $25 actually lasts me about a week. I'm also storing my pod on the server, which means it essentially saves my entire workspace. Everything I have installed, all the models, all my files onto their servers. So that works out about 17 cents an hour to store. And again, it's more affordable for me to do this right now than buy a PC. Now let's set up our computer. So if you go over to Community Cloud, now there are a couple of options you can do with RunPod. You can actually bid for computers, but I don't like doing that. I just actually just pay the on-demand price, which like I said, is about 32 cents an hour. Now my favorite GPU for using uh, automatic 111 web UI is the RTX 3090. As you can see, it's got 24 gigabytes of RAM or the RTX A5000. This currently is my favorite. So we're going to select that one. So we've got 24 gigabytes of VRAM, excellent, and 29 gigabytes of RAM. Obviously you get more expensive to set up, which this one's got 48 gigabytes of VRAM. Depends on your budgets, but you know, this is pretty good for me. So I'm gonna click on select. Now what I absolutely love about RunPod is that they come with templates that have predefined installations on them. If I click on templates up here, a drop down list comes of all different versions of installations, which it can install straight away onto your virtual machine and you don't have to do a thing. So you can see there are different versions of stable diffusion, fast stable diffusion. There's Invoke AI you might've heard of. It's like an alternative to automatic 111. Disco diffusion as well, which you can create animations in. You've also got stable diffusion version 1.5 and version 2.1. Now I 
like 1.5 version because I feel like it's the uncensored version of stable diffusion. So that's what I use most. And a lot of the models out there, especially on Civit AI, are trained on version 1.5. And ControlNet, preferably you want to be using 1.5. I'm going to select the RunPod Stable Diffusion 1.5. So once you have your template selected, come over to Container Disk and Volume Disk. So this is essentially the storage space that you have on these disks. Now, by default, I tend to set mine to 60 gigabytes container disk and 60 gigabytes volume disk. You can actually increase it at any point. So if you do run out, it's not a big deal. You can just come back and increase it on your pod. You don't have to restart or create a new pod. You can just increase it. It's very easy to do that. I go for about 60 gigabytes and if I go over, I just increase. I'm going to have a total disk space of 120 gigabytes. If you hover over the question mark, you see the disk charges here. Now once you're happy with everything we're going to click on continue and then you can see the price summary of what you're going to be charged. You've got your GPU cost which is 32 cents an hour, your running disk cost which is 17 cents an hour and that's what obviously you're going to be charged if you're not using your workspace but have it saved. Okay once you're happy just click on deploy and this essentially is now building my computer so they refer to your computer as a pod. From here I go to my pod. So here we are in my pod screen. This is where that button has just taken us. So the top pod is my pod that I've set up and that I use day to day and I just keep it exited when I'm not using it and it roughly equates to about 17 cents an hour when I'm not using it but it's got everything saved and set up for me just to hit the ground running it's got all my files in. Now for this tutorial this is the stable diffusion run pod that I just set up and if we just expand down here by clicking on this purple button you can see all the pods information here. It takes a couple of seconds for the workspace to be set up and for everything to be installed for you so if the connect button is still great just give it a few more minutes and it will connect all we need to do is click on connect so the first button will take you straight into stable diffusion and then the second button underneath is just your file structure underneath so where we're going to install all our files and models etc so let's visit the stable diffusion interface by clicking connect via http and as you can see it's loading up the automatic 11 interface which is obviously pre-installed onto this workspace which is really really cool so this is the automatic 111 web UI and as you can see up here on the top left we've got the stable diffusion 1.5 checkpoint model already loaded in. So I'm going to show you further on into the tutorial how to install your own checkpoint model. So first thing we want to do is install ControlNet. Now ControlNet comprises of currently nine different models and they're all very quite powerful in their own way. In the next tutorial video I'm going to be showing how you can animate with ControlNet. To install Install control net all we need to do is go over to the last tab which is extensions and then click on install from the URL tab and then from here we're going to paste this link which is in my description below so this link is the github repository you need to leave this bottom box empty and then we're going to click on install you'll see like a little loading icon here and that will take literally under 60 seconds to install and then you'll get this message underneath. Once you have that message go to install tab just here and then click on apply and restart UI. You will get this and this is a bad gateway. Do not worry we've essentially just restarted our stable diffusion so we're just going to close that window down and go back to my pods. This will probably be open for you still if not you just click on connect and then click on the top one and that essentially reopens automatic 111 where if we go down here you can see do, 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 the control net window so we've got all our control net installed so now we need to get the control net models at the time of filming there are currently nine models sat on the control net hugging face website which we can download now we can download all of them or you can download one or two it doesn't matter there is a really quick way to download these files on RunPod. if you go back to my pod and then we're going to connect to jupiter lab so jupiter lab as i said before is like your workspace so where all your files are so this is where we're going to install those 
files from hugging face to so give that a click so yes it is intimidating when you first see the screen but do not worry this is like your desktop you can think of and these are just like your run cmd that you can then run and install files you will get your head around it and you will understand it we want to open up a terminal which is a little bit like your cmd on your computer now in the description i have this link so copy and paste this link exactly and you want to do control v to paste and this is just the link that will then install runpod ctl which is their way of transferring files so hit return on the keyboard and as you can see it will install that runpod ctl onto your workspace or your pod and now we are all set to download and install files from hugging face what we need to do now is navigate to the folder on our workspace where we want to download those files to so we're going to go to stable diffusion web ui and in there extensions and then in stable diffusion web ui control net and then models and then in here this is where we're going to keep all our control net hugging face models so we are simply just going to go to the hugging face website again in the description below and these are the models from control net so the first one i'm going to download is the canny if you click on that link there and then you'll come to another screen here you'll see the word download right mouse click on that and copy link now we're going to go back to our files and we're going to then close this terminal because it's not pointing to the right file and then we're going to open up a new terminal and you might thinking why do you need to do that so when you open up a terminal it's relating to what file path you're actually in so if i open up this terminal here you can see the path it's pointing to so that's my models folder that's a very important piece of information to know to install that canny model we just need to type w g e t space and then control v so remember we copied that link and return on the keyboard and as you can see how fast is this going this is going exceptionally fast if i did this on my pc it would honestly take about two hours to transfer but it is super fast so that's going to take two minutes to download that five gig file onto our computer that we're renting you can see there it's installing and it will take about two minutes to install that five gig file so you can go back and repeat that step to get open post once you've downloaded all the models that you want to from the hugging face page we can now download a ckpt file which is essentially a trained model that will allow us to create images in a particular style to do this what you want to do is come to this home button here which will take you to the top level of your file structure and from here we want to navigate to stable diffusion web ui and then then go to models and stable diffusion and then this is where your .ckpt files will live. Now you're probably wondering where you can get a model from and if you visit Civit AI they have tons and tons of free models that you can download and try. This is the home page here and as you can see they're ranked at highest rated. So we're going to go with the highest rated just for this tutorial which is deliberate but Dream Shaper is a really nice model as well which you can download so just click on the model that takes your fancy so in here what we need to do is click on this drop down button and where you say where it says model safe tensor right click on it and copy the link and then we'll go back to jupyter lab here and then make sure you're in the models folder and click on terminal here and just like before we're going to type in we get space Control v to paste that link and then that will now install that model into your folder here if you bear with it it should come up it's coming there it is now it gives it a weird name there so we just need to essentially rename it by pressing f2 on the keyboard and typing dlib or whatever you want to call it dot ckpt so from here we can jump back into our stable diffusion tab which i've got open already i'm going to click refresh and then from the drop down list 
my CKPT file is there, which is the deliberate CKPT file from Civit AI. So now with that, we need a prompt. And this is very cool with Civit AI. You can actually see what users have been using for their prompt. So if we head back to the deliberate page and come down and let's just click on this image here, it will give you the prompt as well as the negative and all the settings that were used in automatic 111 web UI to create this wonderful image. So what you can do is simply copy and paste these prompts into your own. Now I'm just doing this for a tutorial, but you will want to change these prompts. We're literally absolutely copying this image and we're going to be taking the sampler, which is the DPM 2M Coraris there and the settings. I think the sampling steps were 30. I'm going to go there and let's make this image 768 by 512 and then click generate. As you can see, it hasn't created the exact same image, but if I give that a click, that is a really nice image and you can see it sort of looks like the same character. It sort of helps you with prompt crafting as well because it gets you to experiment with different style prompts as well and see what they generate. Once you've established your pod and set everything up, you can simply log into it from any device such as your iPhone, your iPad, Android devices. It's really easy to do. You just go to the website run pod, log in and your pod is there and you just press play on it to get up and running. So with that done, we are going to be creating an animation with ControlNet. Uh, I'm packing a lot into this tutorial here. Maybe I should have made that into a separate bit, but we're here now. This is going to be a super duper quick overview of just how to create an animation quickly. This tutorial video is not about creating animations, more about, you know, setting up RunPod. But I'm here and you're here, so we might as well do this. So I'm going to make sure I'm in the Jupyter Lab and on the top of my file structure. So you just press that home button to get back to the top of your workspace here. I'm going to right click here and create a new folder. So we want a folder to put all our input frames in. So I'm going to call this input underscore frames. I'm just going to double left click to go into this input folder and then I have some frames on my computer that I want to drag into here to use as the basis of my animation. I'm just going to navigate to my folder on my computer. Now these frames were a movie file and I converted them to PNG. So there's really loads of ways you can do that. You can use this website here to convert a movie to PNG frames or you can do it in After Effects or DaVinci Resolve, whichever your preferable method. Again, if you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to do that, that is on my website. The link is in the description below. We're going to grab all these frames by pressing Control A on the keyboard and I'm just going to drag them into my workspace. Now you're going to have to wait a second until you see this dashed line around. I've got quite a few files here, 449, so it's going to take a minute to upload. So once you've uploaded your input files into your input frames, we need to create an output. So this is where Stable Diffusion is going to save its files to. So I'm going to right click again and and click new folder. I'm going to call this output underscore frames. Okay, so once that's done, let's go over to stable diffusion. So you can just start stable diffusion up or you might have it open already. So I'm going to make sure my model is loaded in, which is deliberate ckpt from Civit AI and I'm going to go over to the image to image tab. Now I've already written in my prompt here and I've also put a negative prompt as well. And if we come down to the image to image tab and just see what I've done here. Now the only things I have changed here is the height and the width which I've changed to 768 by 768. Sampling steps is still on the default 20. I could probably put that up but I haven't. And the CFG scale is 10.5 and denoising strength is 0.23. Essentially, this is going to be keeping my image quite close to my input images. And the seed here, I actually have a seed because I created an image earlier and I quite liked it. So I saved the seed from that and put that in there. Now, control net. So yours will look like this and you just click on it to expand. And you can see I've got three new tabs here. You're probably wondering what these three new tabs are. If you go up 
into settings and then go to control net you can see you can actually overlay models so you have nine models in total which are like the open pose the canny and normal and depth blah 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 and and you can now actually add them together and embed them into one animation or image which is really really cool if we go back to image to image and come back down here you can see i've actually loaded in three models in this tutorial i actually only use two so the first model i've loaded in is the canny model so i made sure that the enable checkbox is checked and the pre-processor is canny from the drop down list and the model is canny keeping all the settings as they are here for this tutorial so now we've got the control model one which again you just make sure you click on enable and the pre-processor is depth and the model is the depth model and again i've just left everything as default okay now i'm going to go to the batch so this is where we put our path so the input directory is where we want to put the input files from so that's the original video split out in two frames so we're going to go back to the jupyter lab here and on the input frames folder just right click and find a copy path there go back to your stable diffusion here and then paste that into your input directory now you have to put a forward space in front of the path otherwise it's not going to work and not going to be able to find this path so remember that's quite important okay so now we go to output and then copy path and the same again I just put this here remember to put that forward slash in front of the output path there we go so I think everything is looking okay and we are ready to generate this animation. So Stable Diffusion has finished rendering the frames out. So to get those frames, if you just go to your output frames, which you created earlier, and then you'll see all your frames in here and you simply just select all the frames in the folder you can then right click and click download and those will download to your pc and then you can do whatever you want with those frames so i've just brought those frames into after effects you can use davinci resolve or whatever program you like and if you just press play on the spacebar you can see the animation there it's not perfect and to be honest there's so many so Settings that I could change to make it better but I just wanted to tag this on to the end of the video so you can see that it works quite nicely with RunPod. So there's a couple of things I need to tell you good people before I leave you alone. So once you finish running your pod, you need to go to this stop button. Now this will continue to charge you money for storage. So if you want to keep your pod and don't mind being charged for the storage and to keep your workspace, just click on stop pod. As I said, you will be continuously charged even if you stopped your pod because they're charging you for the space. Now, if you want to get rid of your pod completely and do not want to be charged anything you need to go to this terminate if you click on that terminate button and click yes that will delete your pod and you will not be charged a thing anymore so this is very important because i think the first time i used run pod i didn't know this and i lost all my credits by not exiting out of my run pod thank you so much for watching this video i know there was a lot to take in i want to do a dedicated control net video because actually i have better ways of creating animations that i've just shown but i just wanted to show you how to do the file structure within run pod so yeah i'm hoping to make a next video on animations and creating animations in a run pod and videos and that sort of fun stuff so hopefully this has helped you whether you're using it on your rubbish computer your iPhone, your Android, your iPad. I really like this technique. I'm not being paid by RunPod to create this video. I actually do use them. But if you do have any questions, please go to them and to their website. I'm sure they'll be able to help you out better than I can. But if there are any problems, please use the comment section where either I can help you out maybe or another user as well, because obviously I've been using this for a while and I've seen some of the errors that come up and some fixes to resolve them. So if you don't get an answer in my comment section, please go over to their help as well. And remember to sign up to the Prompt Muse newsletter in the description below because I am giving away a 
whole truck load of $25 credits to use on RunPod and I will be picking the winners from the list of people's email to sign up so I can obviously get in contact with them but yeah let me know in again in the comment section what you think and yeah thank you very much and that will do it bye bye